So the next thing that we're going to do, or rather the first thing that we're going to do is create a simple index.html file. And all it does is uses Google one tap sign in to sign you in to the application as a whole, effectively granting basic profile access via the OAuth process. So I am going to be using Visual Studio today. And make this a little smaller in our client x.html file. It's just a very, very simple bare bones HTML file. I'm, I'm going to avoid using any frameworks or anything to the extent that I can, just to make sure that nothing kind of hidden or nothing that is can, can be lost in translation. Let's just create a little header, call it my awesome app. And all we'll do, our client, let's spin up simple Python server. Which you can do with that command. Now if we head on back to localhost, there's our app. One tap sign in, this is an awesome product and the team who manages the experience around this, presumably the developer relations team has done a fantastic job here. So let's go into their documentation. It's the Google identity, sign in with Google, and then sign in with Google here over the guides. And the first thing we'll do is load the client library. We will just add here. And then they have this awesome code generator tool by doing this, it'll create the sign in with Google button for you, which is very cool. So it's first asked for your Google client ID, which we can get from the newly created set of OAuth credentials. Oh, and just a quick side note, I am showing my credentials here. In practice, you wanna keep these credentials private, especially this client secret here. I'm simply sharing them because this is a demo. I'm actually going to delete this set of credentials following the demo. And that's the only reason I'm sharing it. But in practice, do not share these with other folks. All right, so go back over here. Let's just move this over here. Enter our client ID, sign in. So this, you can either enter in a login URI to handle responses. But in our case, what we want to do is just have this go to a JavaScript callback. And with that callback, we'll kind of handle the response uh, I'll, I'll show you how that goes. So handle login, we'll call that. Next, just a couple of options. I'll enable all this. And with that, I can just write get code, copy. And I will throw that right here. Add a script. Uh, you know what, let's just for the sake of being organized, let's create an app.js file here. Handle login. Uh, this is going to take a response. And we will just probably need the function declaration. And we'll just console.log response. See what happens. Head over to our app, reload our console. Okay, so we're already seeing an error. It is saying that the given origin is not allowed for the given client ID. When you use this API, uh, you need to add an authorized JavaScript origin. Since we're just testing, URI is HTTP localhost 4200. And from playing around with this before, I know when you are doing testing, you should both add URI with and without the port for localhost. Let's hit save, pop that back open, and let's try that again. All right, now it's asking me, do I wanna continue as Devin? Continue, and nothing happened. So it's saying callback is not defined. Oh, I didn't import my script, so well, that would make sense. I told you this would be a live demo. Let's try that one more time. Beautiful. And now we have 
our response. And as you can see here, one of the items, hopefully you can see that, is credential here. And that is the piece of information that we'll want for later. So that credential is a JWT token that when decoded, we can grab a bunch of information, the profile information. We're going, for our purposes, we're going to care about the ID of the user. And this is going to be the ID of the user in our application. Then when we generate refresh tokens, the ID that we decode from this credential will be our key in our secret manager to retrieve the value of the refresh token. And for storing secrets, you generally want to use some sort of secure mechanism, whether it's encryption or we often prefer a secret manager. I'm going to be using the Google Cloud Secret Manager API. It makes this super easy. So let's go on in back to our code editor. Instead of just console.logging the response, we're going to save it. Save an item called token response.credential. And that's all we're going to do here. So this really hasn't done much, but it's given us a piece of information to just log into the application as a whole. Now one thing I'll point out if we go back into accounts.google.com, now you can see Google Ads API test app has access to basic account info, but it doesn't have access to our ads account.